And today we're going to talk about linear versus nonlinear functions. So take out your lesson worksheet if you have a copy. Looks like this. If you don't have a copy, that's okay. You can follow along with me anyway. Here's the problem. Determine whether each of the given functions is linear or nonlinear. Explain each answer. Okay, first of all, we're going to start with a few definitions. So linear functions have a constant rate of change. Now, a constant rate of change means it's the same thing happening over and over and over again. So if you're saving money in a bank account and you save $50 every single week, that would be a constant rate of change. It would always be plus 50, plus 50, plus 50. If you save $50 one week and then 25 the next week and then 75 the next week, that's a variable rate of change, right? That's not constant. So that would be nonlinear, okay? So when they're talking about a variable rate of change, that just means it's not the same thing over and over and over again. Now, we're gonna check and see if these relationships here are linear or nonlinear. All right, when we have a table of values, remember we just figure out what the rate of change is, and that is change in y over change in x. So I'm gonna look on my table and I'm gonna see what's going on here. From one to 16, that would be a plus 15 on that side. And then from over here, from negative three to zero would be a plus three. So my change in y over my change in x is gonna be 15 over three, and that equals five. All right, let's try the next one. I'll be colorful. From 16 to 26, that's a plus 10. And over on this side, from zero to two, that's a plus two. So you might look at this and think, oh, this isn't linear because this is different. However, be careful. You gotta check your change in y over your change in x. And if we do 10 over two, that is five, right? So it's the same thing, same rate of change. All right, then we can check our next one. From 26 to 41, so that's a plus 15 again. Well, since this is a plus 15, this better be a plus three over here or it's not gonna work. Fortunately, two um, plus three does give us five. So we've got 15 over three. And again, that is positive five. So these all have the same rate of change, right? We've got a rate of change of five every single time. And you have to make sure you check the whole table because the first two might work and then maybe the third one doesn't. And then that means it's not a constant rate of change. So this is gonna be a linear function right here. And that's because it's got the same constant rate of change. All right, then we're gonna look on a graph. Now on a graph, the way that we're gonna know that a function is linear is it's gonna be a straight line, right? The line is straight. And you have to be careful with this. It means one continuous straight line. It doesn't mean a straight line going up and then a straight line going down, right? No zigzags, okay? No curves, no zigzags. So this one is going to be nonlinear. Whoops. And the reason that this is nonlinear is because the line is going up and then it's coming down, right? So this is nonlinear. So be careful. Even though it's made up of two straight line segments, that does not mean it's linear. It's got to be one continuous line. And another way we can think of it as this line is going up here, right? So this would have a positive slope and then it's coming down. So this is going to be a negative slope. So if something has a positive slope and then a negative slope, that's not the same rate of change. All right, then we've got an equation. So when you have an equation, all you're doing is you are looking at whatever exponent is on the x, right? So we're gonna look at the variable x, we're looking at this x right here, and we're gonna look at what exponent is on the x. And we want it to have an exponent of one. Now we know that whenever we have a plain variable, when I have a plain old x here, that really means x to the first power, right? We just don't bother to write it. So because this is a plain x or an x to the first power, that means this is linear. And that's it. Right? If we were to graph this line, we would put a point on negative nine, right? because that would be our y-intercept, and then we'd be going up 10 and right one, up 10, right one, up 10, right one. So that would be um, a constant rate of change. All right, let's look at these examples on the bottom. Now, if you're feeling good about this, 
and you want to try to do these six problems on the bottom, why don't you do that? Um, you can stop the video while you do it and then start playing it again and then we'll go over the answers together. If you're feeling confused and you wanna watch me do a few more, I am fine with that as well. All right, here we go, number one. So we're gonna figure out our change in Y over our change in X and we need to check the whole entire table. So from eight to seven, we've got a minus one. From negative four to negative two, we've got a plus two. From seven to six, we've got a negative one. From negative two to zero, we've got a plus two. From six to four, we've got a negative two this time. And from zero to four, we have a plus four. And then from four down to one, we've got a negative three this time. And from four to 10, we have a plus six. So we need to check all of these change in y over change in x. So I've got negative one over two, right? Negative one half. Same thing again, negative one over two. Here I've got negative two over positive four. Well, negative two over positive four, if I reduce that, would be negative one half, so that works. And then here we've got negative three over positive six, which again will reduce to negative one half. So when I look at these rates of change, they're all the same, right? They are all negative one half. Even though the numbers in the table were a bit different at times, they all reduce to the same thing. So that means that this is actually linear because it's got the same rate of change. So I'm gonna write a little note here that this one is linear. All right, for an equation, remember all you're doing is looking at the exponent that is on the x. Well, here's my x. I say to myself, is that a plain x? It certainly is, right? If this had an exponent on it, it would just be an exponent of one. So this one is linear. All right, this one. Hopefully we can tell that this graph is not linear, right? Because it does not make a straight line, a continuous straight line. We got a big old curve in here. So this one is nonlinear. And my reason for that would be my line is curved, right? This big curve right here tells me right away that it is not linear. All right, this equation down here, again, I'm looking at my x and I'm checking that exponent. Well, look at this. This one has an exponent of two, right? The exponent is two. So because that has an exponent of two and it doesn't have a plain old x or an x to the first power, that means this is nonlinear. If we graphed it, it would have a curve. Number five, got myself in a straight line here, a continuous straight line. There's no zigzags, there's no curves, there's nothing, right? This is a perfectly straight line. It's continuous. So this is linear for sure. Number six, we've got another table here. So let's figure out some change in Y over change in X. From two to four, we're adding a two. And from one to two, we're adding one. So our slope is two over one or our rate of change is two over one. I'll write it on the side here. Two over one equals two. Then I'm gonna check my next one. I've got a plus four here, and on this side I've got a plus one again. Uh-oh, I think there's a problem. Because if we do four over one, that equals four. Different, right, these are different, they're not the same. One's a two and one is a four. So these are definitely not the same rate of change. So this is gonna be nonlinear. And the reason is because two does not equal four, right? These are different rates of change. Hopefully that made some sense to you. I think this is a pretty easy lesson, but if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask me in class tomorrow or ask your math teacher. I'm sure they will be happy to help you. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.